Hello, partners, friends, reformers, and leaders around the world. So honored that you've chosen to join us on tonight's broadcast. Uh, this particular broadcast is another one of what we uh, title Conversations with Abner. God has given me the privilege of traveling around the world and meeting the most extraordinary people in God. And so often I will sit with leaders and we will just dialogue, sometimes about their life in God, sometimes about their experiences in God. And, and always, always we hear the voice of God speaking. So tonight, as you listen, whether it's part one, part two, part three of a conversation, I want to encourage you to have ears to hear and eyes to see what God is doing, because you are going to hear from, uh, you're going to hear the voice of God through someone that is walking with God and that has fruit in God and that is a leader in the body of Christ. So I just bless you to have ears to hear, eyes to see, and to receive what God has from you through this broadcast. Hello, partners, friends, reformers around the world. Welcome to tonight's broadcast. I am so honored every time people take quality time to receive uh, from this program and through this ministry. This week, I'm back with my dear friend, Steve Burkhalter, originally from Gordo, Alabama, now living 18 years in Fortaleza, Brazil. If you missed last week's program, we talked a little about Steve's journey, and God really was just ministering on the subject of process Everyone has a purpose, but it's in the context of process that we walk out that purpose. So that archive program is available. Just before we jump into tonight's program, I want to encourage you to like or share this broadcast. And uh, back with my dear friend, Steve Burkhalter. And yeah. Steve, I, I just felt <clears throat> impressed uh, of the Lord just before uh, we jumped into tonight's broadcast is to really just ask you uh, your heart on what does it mean for us as believers to disciple nations? Mm. We know that in Genesis 1, that's the mandate given to man. God establishes his kingdom in Genesis chapter 1. And, and that kingdom mandate is be fruitful, multiply, steward the earth, have dominion. And uh, he actually says, he doesn't say let he doesn't say let us. He actually gives man the dominion to steward the planet. And then Matthew 28, Jesus is not introducing something no. <laughs> new to humanity. He is reaffirming yeah. the the authority that was lost to do that. Yep. And he says to us, go there. Uh, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Mm -hmm. Go, therefore, make disciples of all nations. Yeah. And so we know we have this mandate to mm -hmm. disciple nations. And almost every time I even talk about that subject, I remember... Uh, about five, six years ago, I'm preparing to minister. We we're hosting a, a conference on the subject of reformation, but the Lord said to me, he said, just because it hasn't been done yet, discipled nations, I haven't changed my mind. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm not gonna change my mind. Mm -hmm. And it, it's written forever, it's settled. His word is settled forever in heaven. So I know it's a hugely broad subject, but yeah. why, why don't you, and you lead a, an organization called Nations mm -hmm. to Nations, why don't you just, Give us what you feel like God's heart is on that. What, what, what does that mean to disciple nations? Yeah. What does that look like? What, where do I even begin? Just anywhere you want to hit it. So. Well, obviously, like you said, that's a very uh, broad subject. A lot of things that can be talked about. But uh, one of the big issues that I think we, we encounter today is most people that I know in the Christian reality and, and I work with the Christian church here in Brazil and Latin America right and, and, and really I've traveled to about 20 different countries and it's been primarily working with the Christian community and uh, unfortunately my perspective is very few people have ever actually been discipled just disciple believers <laughs> that's a great very point. people have actually been discipled in what is God doing on the earth mm. And what is our role in that, and how do we do it? Mm -hmm. You know, most people are focused on how do I get to heaven? How do I get off the earth? Instead Stick, of, see. like Jesus said, Stick. we should pray for God's kingdom in heaven to come and be manifested on earth. It's good. And so most people are just, they're just can, buying can their just, time we'll just here. just pause here because I'm reminded, yeah. actually, this, this, uh, we just premiered this program last night. I sit it with my, my dear friend, Jay Morgan, and um, one of the things that came out when we were talking about discipleship is this, that when, if you watch Jesus interacting with his disciples, 
We, we know he had the 12, the 3, the 72. But when you see him interacting, he never once articulates that the goal was to go to heaven. Mm. <laughs> he never, and I say that sometimes that can be offensive to yeah, some people. And yeah. it's, not intended to, it's not intended to be funny or offensive or, or even be little if that's right. been your heart. But I, I say that because Proverbs 29, 18 says, without a vision, the people, people of God lost. perish. Yeah. And if you don't have God's vision, you can never reap God's fruit. That's what I've that's learned. That's right. And so, in, in fact, same context, because I... I've had these conversations with the Lord. You're, I feel like I'm prophesying or even talking about things that are so beyond my own experience in some ways, and then even the church at large. And he said, unless you give people a vision for it, they can never live in it. Yeah. And so the goal is, I, I believe that I'm excited to go to heaven one day. I really am. But here's another conviction that I live with, and it's that this, this is my shortest, the shortest part of my existence. Mm -hmm. When I know some time has gone since we met 18 years ago, but it literally feels like yeah, that to wow, me. That's right. And, that's right. And the Bible teaches that your life is but a vapor. Yeah. And I know I'm going to be judged, eternally mm -hmm. judged. In fact, I don't even think it's a measure of going to heaven. I know I'm going to heaven, but I believe part of the quality of what I'm going to experience in the next place has to do with how I'm living now. Mm -hmm. I believe that with all my heart. I don't think we're up in heaven just eating desserts all day. Mm -hmm. I actually believe we're still co-laboring yep. with the Lord yeah. to extend... For eternity. Yeah, to extend universe. Yeah. Of course, enthralled with who He is. Yeah. But there, that, that aspect... Without the presence of sin. Yeah. 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 The, the, the challenge without, without, without... Having dominion without the challenge yeah. of the, the foe. Yeah. So I say all that to say... I don't believe I, I, I that is that's not the goal. The goal is to be like him. Yes, and out of being like right. him, we extend yeah. that kingdom that he yeah. called us on the earth. So yeah. I just I, I, I sorry, I know you're going. Yeah. But I wanted to throw in that I think it's so important when we begin <clears throat> that concept it and you said it of being a disciple person yeah. that the goal is not to go to heaven. Yeah. The goal. He never articulates yeah. that. He never says, Hey, I'm gonna give you all these principles. Mm -hmm. And one day you're going to heaven. It was heaven yeah. was a con yeah. If if heaven was the goal, most of the scripture can be done away with. Exactly, it doesn't have any purpose. Yeah, and and we do know this yeah. that the that the especially he was a Jew. Jesus was a Jew. All the original apostles were Jews. They would not understand that even the early church would not understand this concept of leading someone so they can go to heaven. Yeah, Jesus represented the inbreaking of yeah. heaven on earth, the inbreaking of that age. And we know it's here now, but it's also yeah. coming. That's yeah. absolutely true. But it was this privilege that God has now broken into this age. The Spirit of God breaks in, available to all people so heaven can come to earth yeah. now. I don't know about all the context historically yeah. of what actually took place, but it seems like there was a great shift maybe about 100 years ago or so in uh, the idea of evangelism, looking at the problem as being hell. And hell has never been our problem. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't die to save us from hell. Yeah. He died to save us from sin. Yeah. Sin's the problem. Right. So uh, working out that sin is, is about a process that comes through relationship with God and, and, and walking with Him, like, you know, things we talked about in the, the other podcasts to a large degree. But uh, most people go an idea that, that evangelism, getting saved, is about being saved from hell instead of being saved from sin, which sin is what causes us to live incorrectly. <laughs> yeah. Sin causes the earth to live incorrectly. Causes, and consequentially, us living incorrectly is what causes the earth to not function correctly. That's right. The earth is out of... God created the earth in order, but He also created the earth to respond to man's care of it. That's right. So if man is not caring for the earth yeah. correctly, the earth is out of order. That's exactly right. And as we are restored and reconciled and living according to the truth of God mm -hmm. and the way He does things with Him right. under His authority and under His direction, guidance, leadership, teaching, mm -hmm. you know, everything, His Lordship, right. <laughs> then w not only does it transform our lives and our relationships with Him, with each other, but it also trans transforms the way we relate to nature, which very, the nature in and of itself here of the earth gets changed. That's right. And, and the, Paul wrote about that the earth is actually waiting for the people of God to rise up and, and do their job. 
It's yeah. anxiously awaiting That's right. for the response of, of, of men here on earth to live according to the truth and the reality that God has given us. I think um, two things that just jump out at me at what you're just saying. Genesis 3, I've read it hundreds, if not thousands of times, still getting from it. But one of the things that has really jumped out at me over the last number of years is once they believe the wrong thing, they act incorrectly. Mm -hmm. Their belief system causes their bodies to be distorted, mm -hmm. causes the earth to be distorted yep. because they were called to be a steward of that. Yep. And now the earth is out of alignment. But then you don't find Adam and Eve ever having any problems with each other until they're believing the wrong thing about themselves. Mm. So now everything in the earth is distorted because of that belief. Yep. And then Paul says that the, the, the earth groans for the sons of God to appear. I believe that even as we sit outside here today in Fortaleza, Brazil, that when I speak the word of God correctly, hopefully I've heard from the Lord of what I'm supposed to do this weekend, tonight. When I'm declaring what God is saying, not only can it bring transformation to people, but actually the city yeah. and a region can yeah. come into alignment. So the first principle you would say then of discipling nations is broad issues, disciple people. You want to expand on that? For sure. Absolutely. Yeah. We can't. We can't transform uh, a country yeah. without transform uh, districts or regions. Yeah. And we can't transform a region or a state without transform cities. Yeah. We can't transform cities without transform communities yeah. within the city. Yeah. We can't transform a community without transformed families. Yeah. And we can't have transformed families without transformed individuals. Okay. So the <laughs> so back in it all the way back. Yeah. In. The the Abner follow up question yeah. then is okay. I want to be disciple properly. Yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to walk that out. What's? What's? How do we? How, how is a believer transformed? Yeah. Well, obviously, you've got to have someone in your life that is discipling you. Mm. You can't be discipled without a discipler. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can't go through a transform, transformation uh, in isolation on an island. Yeah. You can't transform yourself. Right. Okay. Uh, but Jesus uh, obviously said, I only do what I see the Father doing. Okay, And Paul said, it's interesting, I like the Portuguese translation, because he uses the word, he says, Nice and windy in Fortaleza. He says, imitate me as I Christ. It's good. Is That's the right. way he says it. And uh, so Jesus says, I do what the Father's doing. Paul says, I do what Jesus does. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so the first key to be uh, being a disciple is you have to be a disciple. Disciple. You, know? you have to be under somebody that, that there's authority over your life, that they can give you correction, they can give you direction, they can teach and train you. Do you think you ever outgrow that? You never outgrow that. Even me you too. Never outgrow yeah. That. yeah, I would say that. Um, absolutely true. Yeah. And interesting, as you grow and mature and you learn things in your disciple process, one of the things of learning and teaching, of growing, continuing to grow, is teaching others. You really don't know something until you've taught it. It's true. Okay. That's absolutely, I've learned that. To you be true. really don't know something until you've taught it. And when you teach it, you find out what you really know and what you don't know. Yeah. And, and, and teaching it in the degree that the people you're teaching are actually able to use and be transformed and put into practice and be successful with what you're teaching them. So I want to go back so, to a point you just made there. Yeah. Somebody watching this, they're going, well, I want somebody to disciple me, but, you know, maybe my church is, so all we do, I, maybe we have a small group or a Bible study or I hear really good teaching on Sunday, but it just doesn't, I want more. What will yeah. you tell them? Pray and ask God to, to show you. <laughs> that simple. <laughs> Find the person. God, yeah, yeah. God is so committed to this happening. He's, one thing I, I, I've definitely learned along my journey about God's provision God never is going to frustrate us and frustrate us in what He wants us to do by lack of provision for what we need for it. Yeah. Never. Yeah. So if I need a discipler to be discipled, yeah. it's not because there's not somebody that can disciple me. Right. Yeah. It's because I'm just not looking or seeking it. Yeah. Or maybe I don't want to accept the person that God has for me to disciple me. I want somebody different than what God, the person that, that yeah, are people that I, I God wants seen, for me. I have you know? seen that many times in my experience with people yeah. that there is someone who would yeah. take the time. And you can be them. discipled in some ways, in some things, by a non-Christian. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of non-Christians actually practicing God's principles. Even though they're not submitted to God's lordship in their life, 
they still use his principles that you can be trained and, and taught how to obey and apply God's principles in some areas, even from a non-believer. Mm. Now, I'm not suggesting we go right. out, you know, right. characterize right. being taught by non-believers, yeah. but I'm saying we, we don't have any excuses of what I'm trying to say. Yeah, yeah. And I would say, too, I think that sometimes people who are maybe saying that they want someone to disciple them, oftentimes it's um, they aren't even stewarding like elementary things. Mm -hmm. They haven't developed or even attempted to develop a fellowship with God. They're not a person who gets in the word. So I believe when you when you even just steward, stewardship is a big yeah. part of discipleship. That, it is an essential part. It's yeah. not a big part. Yeah, you you say, can't yeah. have discipleship without stewardship. And, and the only reason I yeah. say that is because I believe what people think sometimes are small things actually attracts into your life what you need. Yeah. But until you begin to practice even the yeah. fundamentals, yeah. those things won't be attracting to your life. Right. For me, I, rec I received a lot of understanding, wisdom, discipleship for many of uh, when I began to build these foundations in my life. I received them just because I was hungry, yeah. and it wasn't until later in life that God began to, at key times, bring yeah. the fathers, bring yeah. the disciples yeah. Yeah. into my life. That they can help be, to correct, yeah, and have to exactly. give further development, exactly. and work out the fine tuning of a lot of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But I, but I believe that it, if I had not, and I didn't do it perfect, but if I had not stewarded those things, you wouldn't have got. I don't think stage. those mentors come sure. into my life. Well, God says, if you're faithful with a little, yeah, He'll give you more. Yeah, but if you're not faithful with what you already have, right? How can how can you get more? Right. You know. Right, in right. other words, what what benefit is it going to be to give you more, take you to another level? Right. If you haven't mastered and, and learned how to really be faithful and steward well what you already have, right? Uh, it's just going to become a, a bigger catastrophe. You yeah. Know? There's a whole lot more at stake to be lost. Yeah. So God God doesn't like to waste anything. Yeah. Yeah, but but I want to say just yeah, yeah, just thinking about this, uh, our, our culture, our, our Christian culture today, has really been based a lot more on Greek thinking than biblical thinking, mm. and the whole idea of what I'll quickly call dualism. Yeah, you know the second the yeah, separated of what's yeah. of what's uh, spiritual and sacred, and what's not important to God. Mm. Okay, so we we divide it between spiritual and, and secular. Yeah, is the right. common terminology. That's right. And uh, that's the biggest issue I deal with here in Brazil, you know, in the church, of people not being discipled. So the Greek thinking, the Greek idea of discipleship is we can be discipled in a, in a Sunday morning service. Right. And then all the rest of the stuff we do during the week, our business, our school, and stuff like that, right. that's, that's our secular life that maybe we bring some Bible stuff into it, but it's really not important stuff. The real important stuff is, is the the when I'm together with the Christians in the church in the church context. Whereas the, the a big concept with the Hebrew was, um, in God's mind, there's no secular, there's exactly. no spiritual. Psalm sixteen eight, I believe, David said, "I've set the Lord always be before me." I believe he was making a worldview statement in, in that everything he did, he brought God into. Yeah. And now. Obviously, this isn't applicable today, but one one Jewish teacher once taught, he said, the, the woman need not come to synagogue because in taking care of her family, she has given an act of worship unto God. Yeah. And it, I, I'm not making a biblical state. I'm yeah. just saying that was the mindset. An example, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And a mindset of the... And there's lots of things yeah, we right. could use like that. Right. I won't even go into that right, right, right. now. But uh, what happens is we have the idea that uh, we can learn about God and, and disciple people in these separated moments. It's good, you know. That's so in, good. Yeah. In, in in where we're not really doing life stuff. Right. We're stopping our so-called life to have so discipleship. Good. Yeah. And discipleship does not take place in there. That's discipleship right. Discipleship is about life, how to live life. I agree with that. So where where is it that we're missing the mark? Yeah. Discipleship doesn't take place in that Sunday morning gather, even the small group with your little thing for the for right. the most part. Right. Discipleship takes place where we live. So it's in the family, it's in our work, yes. and it's in, our, it's in our, where we spend Absolute. our time Absolutely. doing life. Yeah. And so that's essential that, that we understand the essence, the goal of it all is to be obedient to God. 
Yeah. Success is not about getting money, having things in life. Yeah. Success is about fulfilling God's purpose. It's about living according to His design and His purpose. Mm. And you mentioned the nations, mm-hmm. the beginning. You know, right. how do we design disciple nations? Exactly and, the broad vision. And nations to nations is is based on a macro po- vision. Revelation seven nine and ten, which talks about a, a big vision that uh, Joan, John, sorry, John the Baptist he uh, he saw a vision of a great multitude of people that no one could count. Uh, of people from every tribe, nation, um, language, and something. <laughs> There's four things. My mind's drawing a blank. And anyway, in that vision, uh, I, I believe that's what God dreamed before Genesis 1. Okay, mm-hmm. so nations has always been on God's heart. Yeah. And what you see in the nations is a diversity of expression yeah. of, of, of units. Yeah. In which uh, you have diverse languages, you have diverse cultures, mm. and you have diverse groups. God loves family. God is family. Yeah. But it's like in the idea of nations, we have a family of families, mm. of diversity, that each one has something unique that in the way it relates to God is special and unique, but it has a gifting and it has a characteristic. It has treasures that the other nations don't have. Mm-hmm. that you, the nations serve one another with, with all of these things. But in order to have that, we've got to go through the maturing process. Mm. Okay? Uh, God is creative and He made us to be creative. But what good is our creativity if we don't have character? Mm-hmm. We don't have maturity. Yeah. Okay? And so the nations are supposed to use their creativity to, to, to have things that bring glory to God, that, that, that is, a, that is a, an expression of the glory of God, but that expression of the glory of God is shared with the other nations. Right. Okay? We, it's we, not we, a competition. It's not a competition. Yeah, it's it's, it's uniqueness and differentness. Seeing the beauty. Yeah. Up. And and that requires the stewardship mandate. Hmm. So when you look at Genesis 1:28, when God said to be fruitful, to multiply, to spread out and fill the earth and have dominion over all these things, those are the four things primarily that are necessary to build God's vision of, of the nations that we see in the picture of Revelation 7, 9, four and 10. Four things listed. Being fruitful, multiplying, uh, spreading out and filling the earth, and having dominion over all the things of the earth. Mm-hmm. Okay, the, the, the animals, the fish, nature. Okay. So what happens there? What does it mean to be fruitful? We have a, uh, right behind us a mango tree. Hmm. Okay. Outside today. Outside a mango tree. And God really spoke to me strongly because we need to understand how to connect John 15. I think it's John 15. John 15 or 17. My mind's not clear right now. I've been thinking about a lot of things these days. And uh, Genesis 1. John 15. John 15 and Genesis 1 where it talks about I am the vine and you're the branches. Mm -hmm. And he goes and talks about it's it's my Father's will that you bear fruit. Okay, mm. and whoever is my disciple will bear fruit. Bear fruit. You know, whoever remains in me and I remain in them, John 15, will, be, yeah. will bear fruit. And it's also the Father's desire meditate, that you know. bear much, much fruit. fruit. Much okay, fruit. and he talks about uh, 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 what do you call it? Pruning, Pruning and uh, uh, whatever doesn't bear fruit is discarded. Discarded. Okay, so God really wants us to be fruitful. But when we look at Genesis 1, we think about just having children. And having children is a way of being fruitful. Right. But when you think about a mango tree, like this tree right here, if it doesn't produce any fruit, the question is, does it have value? Mm. And here where we live, we're close to the equator. The sun is intense here. It doesn't get as hot as Alabama, actually, in temperature, but it feels way hotter Mm. because the sun is so much closer and it's baking you. Mm. So you know what's really good that we're in right now? It's a nice shade. Where's the shade coming from? It's coming from that mango tree. Mm. So this mango tree, even without any fruits, has value. Mm. There's lots of ways you can see that it's sure, valuable. Yeah, yeah. Okay, But what happens when it produces fruits? Even more valuable. It has more value. So wait, what, what this is important to tell us that being fruitful is about adding value. Amen. It's about adding value. So God's very first intention, very first command for us is He wants us to be productive and add value. Okay, but our Greek way of thinking, our Greek way of academic uh, uh, um, uh, equipping and training and teaching us has told us and taught us 
that life is about that we're consumers and life is about consuming. Hmm. Whereas God, our identity in God is that He made us producers. Okay, yeah. so we're all supposed to be adding value. Now think about that. The mango tree needs light and it needs water to live. How does it produce fruits? It takes light and water that it needs to live. Right. And it takes a partner, okay, a partner that brings the pollen, okay, yeah. and it uses what it receives for living to generate or produce fruit, all right, something that's new. It generates new life, something of new life that didn't exist before, using what it received for existence, for its, for its needs of but life. it can't do it on its own. So it transformed that, what it received for living, into something that is productive. Now think about this. What is the benefit of the, the mango fruit for the mango tree? Nothing. Nothing. It's not for him. Yeah. He, doesn't not work. he doesn't work to meet his own needs. He receives the water and he receives the light which he does not produce, which he needs for living. That's good. Okay? Yeah. And then he uses that to produce something new that didn't see, exist before, to create something new. It's our job as believers. Okay? Yes. That adds value to what? To others. To others. Adds value to the reality the that world. God created. Yeah. Okay? Now, what is multiplication? Multiplication is reproducing. I thought for a long time multiplication in, in respect to kids was having lots of kids. Mm -hmm. But it's not. It's about the children that you have, raising them up and taking them through the growth process and the uh, 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 maturing process. Just touching something on my yeah. iPhone. The maturing process is until that child reaches the same level of maturity in you that is producing its own fruit. Mm. Okay? That's so right. That, that is the description of discipleship. Multiplication is actually the description of discipleship. It's taking a fruit that is dependent upon you, helping it to grow and mature to raise up to where it produces its own fruit. That's good, Steve. That's yeah. discipleship. Yeah. Okay? And until that, that uh, child has reached the level that they're no longer dependent upon you, but they are a producer, generating their own fruits of adding value to reality, yeah. you have not discipled and you have not multiplied. Mm. You haven't multiplied. Wow. Okay? Good word. Proverbs 29.2 says what? Uh, when the righteous flourish. Flourish. City rejoices. Okay. Right? People rejoice. But when the wicked rule or dominate, the people cringe. Right. And I, God led me to do a word study on that in the, in the original Hebrew one time. And uh, I, uh, I found out that the word used there that we translate flourish is the exact same word in Genesis 128 that says multiply. Wow. In other words, when the righteous disciple, mm. when the righteous multiply, life's good here on earth. Mm. When the righteous do not reproduce, it's excellent. The, the, the wicked dominate. Yeah. The wicked don't, don't dominate because they're more powerful or they're better. Mm. But that's the way we live our lives. We right. live on the defense of, oh, Jesus, come back soon because it's really hard here. Well, I think you... Mm -hmm. you there was so much good stuff. Wow, there, sorry. But, you know, sorry, no, guys. It's, it's really good. No, no, I, I was just pondering because I, I need to go back and listen to what you just said. But I, I was thinking of this concept of um, in Christ that is so important that, to be an original. And I think you, you just addressed that, even though it's interesting because there's always tensions in truth. We can learn stuff from unbelievers. But then the other side is I think that one of our challenges as a body of Christ is we haven't learned to be originals either. Yeah. And so we're looking at models in the yep. Babylonian system exactly. yeah. and trying to be like Copy that. Copy it and follow it. Where we'll never, it, because it's flawed at its core, we'll yeah. never be able to produce right. what God's called us yeah, to produce. Right. And doesn't so, have his DNA. Yeah, and, and I think the standard is is exact. You, I, I, This verse just kept jumping out at me at the, the concept you were talking about, and it's this. Jesus says in John 14, 12, if you believe, you'll not only do the works I'm doing, but that's the elementary, but you'll actually do greater, greater. works mm -hmm. because he died so we could do greater. So you, as a father, your heart was, I'm going to teach you these principles, but because I'm teaching them at this age, I learned them at 25, 20. Right. You get to learn it at one, two yeah. years old. Yeah that you will do greater than me because these the, the truth comes precept yeah. upon precept, yeah. truth upon truth. Yeah. And because you've got that inheritance, 
you go forward in what I've called to do, which also leads me to another thing that is really, really missing. We talked about it a little bit at lunch today in the worldview of a believer, and that is the concept of being multi-generational. Mm-hmm. And so... Any vision that's really from God yeah. is multi-generational. Right. If, it's, if your vision is not multi-generational, something's disconnected with it in terms of right. being connected with God. Right, Yeah. right, right. Anything else you want to add on that? Man. I mean, there were, we cut a, we so, so much a lot we of could, God. Yeah. you know. And, yeah. But even today, think about the third mission that, in my experience, I've rarely heard anybody else preaching about it. Mm-hmm. But that is what? To spread out and fill the earth. It's true. Today, we're going in the opposite direction of that. Yeah. People are leaving the rural areas, the countryside, to go to the mega urban urban cities. Right. Okay, in general. And, and in other words, God says we're not to build this way, we're to build this way. Yeah. Okay? Yeah, yeah. And what are most of our, our, our church buildings about, our church things? They're about... The gathering. Building up Bringing this way. Bringing people in, yeah. Okay. And uh, discipleship requires us to, to risk out into the adventure of the unknown so that we're forced to depend upon God and through that release our creativity. Right. I believe okay? that. And urban cities is all about convenience. Yeah. Where we go there for money for a better comfort of life, but in reality, it kills creativity. It's a consumer city rather than a consumer center, center rather than a production center. The real production technology is out there when you don't have the, the convenient resources and you've got to depend on God and learn how to use your creativity and build and develop things. I'm thinking... And that's, that, that's yeah, when yeah. you think about Go Genesis ahead. 1, God Keep said going. to spread out. Oh, right. Something really key about that that jumped out to me a few years ago. A lot of people have the idea, going back to the goal of going to heaven, the idea of paradise is going back to the Garden of Eden. The Garden of Eden was kindergarten. I agree. Okay. That was just God, the beginning. God had already given the mandate to leave the garden right. when he said you got to spread right. out and fill the earth. Right. So that them leaving the garden, they left it, had to leave prematurely because they didn't obey God in that situation. They had to be confronted with uh, more difficult circumstances. That it, That is... But but our call is out into the, the jungle, I, out into the adventure of the jungle of the unknown. I believe that's absolutely true. There, You know that there's a line of theological thought that believes that it was obviously on the earth, but it was like an aspect of the heart of God. The heart of God was that garden because it was like their their conception point. It was safe there. It was nice yeah. there. And now he was pushing them out in a sense, giving birth to the human race and now saying, be fruitful, multiply, take what is out of bounds, take what is out of alignment. Because I, th- I still think outside of that garden, it's out of alignment. And it's he, untamed. He, yeah. yeah, he forces them to be mature mm-hmm. because he puts that angel there. He said, you can't yep. come back. Yeah. You got it. You and gotta and go. they, had, they hadn't shown any signs of repentance at that time either. Right. You know? Right. And That's imagine, true. imagine that eating the tree of life and being eternally a teen- teenager with the maturity of a teenager, never going beyond that for eternity. Yeah. 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 So, so it's so excellent that that was just the beginning. Yeah. We're kind of land the plane on this one. We've covered yeah. a lot of ground here. And, Sorry. And Sophie's you, you talking. Me, you get me so, wound up talking so, no, about no, these it's, things. No, it's really good. Yeah. Is there anything else um, as we kind of land the plane on this broadcast? Your dog is barking, but it's okay. We're having fun on this broadcast. Uh, is there anything else just about discipling nations that you think would be important for the people? Well, just, just going back to yeah, Ma- Matthew yeah, 28, yeah. you know, it talks about... Um, Disciple the nations by what? Baptizing in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit and teaching the nations to obey everything that I command you. And it's interesting, we do an English immersion. And the Mm -hmm. word literally that we translate baptize is is immerse. Immerse, Okay? I don't know if Jesus was, you know, I don't know what he was saying when he said that. But we've automatically assumed it means, you know, putting in the water, baptize. But we've done this English immersion here Mm -hmm. in Brazil, training missionaries, in English hmm. and what that means is we get in the, in the context of a community and we cut ourselves off from the Portuguese world to where they only speak we do everything 24 hours a day in English hmm. that is an immersion in right, English right, right. okay that is the way you learn your first language and it's, it's required that immersion 
of contact with English and everything that you do and everything that's going on for them to be able to learn the language, okay, right. correctly. Right. Because they're learning to speak and communicate and recognize things that they don't know, mm-hmm. okay? And, and I think there's a lot of that when it talks about baptizing the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We're talking about name means identity. Mm. What is the nature and character of the Father, of the Son, mm. and Holy Spirit, the Trinity, the family of God? Yeah. So when our, our, our idea of discipling the nations, we have to create a, 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 a reality where we're merging people into constant contact with the identity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit through everything that we're doing. Excellent. Okay? Yeah. And so that's what it's all about. Where's, that's where we go back. Discipleship is something you do in the workplace. What is a business owner other than he's called to disciple people? Really. He's not called about making money. Right. Christian business is not about making money to fund missions or to fund the church. Right. Christian business is about discipling people, okay, and bringing transformation to your community. Right. Okay, into the ways of God, of living and relationship and working together and, and learning mm-hmm. how to obey and put the principles, uh, biblical principles, into play in everything that you do. Yeah. So, and the, and the key there in the end is to obey, teach obedience. Okay. Mm-hmm. I grew up learning obedience was about obligation and fear of punishment. That's and right. It doesn't work. Right. Real obedience works with God when it's done out of intimacy. When you have intimacy with the Trinity, it's, it's easier to obey. You trust them. You trust right. them. So right. obedience is out of relationship, not out of rules and regulations, out of relationship with God. But we have to obey God in order to live life, live life correctly. Yeah. I have a few thoughts here. Just um, land in the plane on this broadcast. But I was thinking we're, we're in a time in the history of the world where I don't think We've experienced some of the things we've experienced in the modern world, mm-hmm. as far as nations shutting down, still the implications of COVID, um, which we know is going way beyond COVID now, but there's obviously a situation in the nations that we've never seen. And I believe that, and I've tried to apply this in my own life, certainly haven't arrived at it, is to fast unnecessary things and un- unnecessary mm-hmm. influences. Wow. Yeah. And I got that from years ago. I remember uh, Brother Hagen when he walked the earth, he used to say, you need to fast unnecessary things, meaning don't allow things to cloud your your heart. I was reading this, obviously, yeah. again this morning, Proverbs 4, guard your heart, read it every morning, guard your heart with mm-hmm. all diligence, mm-hmm. for out of it flow the issues of life. And then this concept of immersion, we know that in, at, in World War II, they didn't have enough German translators. And so it normally takes you two years, they were saying, to learn the German language. They didn't have that time. So what they did with the translators were they would put them for, they called it immersion. A week, two weeks or something, they found that they were getting just as quickly trained. So I feel and I believe that if you're watching this, there is an an invitation for immersion. Mm, There's an invitation to fast unnecessary things because God's mandate to us as believers has not changed even though you know i'm even going to use this this environment we normally don't record outside in an environment like this but it's windy dogs started barking and we're going to get this broadcast out because i think god wants people to hear it but the point of that is in the middle of all that taking place i believe the lord was just saying stay focused i had to stay focused because i i felt like what he was sharing was just revelation for the heart of god for this time still now it's windy again the point is this is how life is lived yeah you're in a Babylonian world, but you don't have to participate it. It could affect you. You could feel it, but you stay focused yeah. on the high yeah. call, the high price. And, and just touching base, uh, uh, one of the persons I've learned a lot from in the past five, ten years is Dennis Peacock. Mm. And I recommend a book he's got, uh, Doing Business God's Way, one of the best books I've ever read other than the Bible. Mm. And uh, he says, uh, just kind of kind of uh, trying to wrap this up, Discipleship is really about getting rid of that which doesn't belong. It's good. Yeah. Yeah. Discipleship is about shedding all of the things that don't belong. That's what discipleship yeah. really is. Mm. Why so, don't you pray for the people too? Yeah. To, to be the disciples that God's called them to be. Amen. Anyone watching this program. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So I, I just want to bless you. And uh, in the name of Jesus, I ask for, for a measure of grace over your life to come and help you to begin to find that person that can 
just really bring input into your life, bring correction, even com confronting you, but also spending time to uh, 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 help you to have greater intimacy with the Father and with the Son and with the Holy Spirit, that you can learn to trust God in new levels for your life and, and really just be able to learn to obey Him easily. Uh, and that through that, things will begin to transform in your life that you, God will open your eyes to the opportunity for you to disciple others in your normal context. It's not that you have to create a special church project for that, but where you are in your own yeah. family, in your own household, in your own community, in your workplace, mm -hmm. you have ample opportunities to be discipling people uh, in obeying God in the principles of life. As you are living out that obedience before them, uh, just that God will make your testimony a confirmation to what he's doing, mm -hmm. to other people to be attracted to him, and that God through you bring, begins to bring solutions to your problems in ways like never before so that, that you understand more than ever before that God's principles work, that uh, they really do lead us to live life correctly and have success in the purposes and things of God, and that your relationships are really blessed through that. So I just bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And I just declare that it's a season in the earth of the local ecclesia, the disciples yes. of God, mm. the remnant rising up. And the Lord says that it is indeed a strategic time in the nations of the earth and uh, reformers and yeah. prophets Amen. of the word of the Lord and and the, the ways of the Lord will be released in this season yeah, of history. Sure. And so in Jesus' name, I bless <laughs> you to be one of those persons. And I declare, yeah. even as I, uh, as, I, as I say this, I just saw like the lightnings of God, the, the baptisms of the Holy Amen. Spirit and fire touching you in Jesus' name. Yeah, uh, yeah. Ahead, and I just ahead. want to add to that. I see that God has called uh, several of you to be a businessman, but you, you were looking at your business. How am I going to make money with this? And you couldn't figure out how to make money. But the light bulb has went on today, and you understand it's not about making money. It's about bringing transformation. Yep. It's about releasing disciples and producing leaders into your community and your disciple. And as you do that, profit will be a fruit. It's not the goal. So I just release you to step forward in obedience to the things that God has put on your heart as a businessman that will be a, an apostolic discipler in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. I just saw even when he was saying that too, just one leader... You've been struggling, actually a pastor, you've been struggling and do I need to give up on this? And just the Lord says, remember that word mm. that I spoke when I called you and I'm wow. still calling you and I haven't changed it. Amen. So thank you so much for joining us, guys. God bless you. And I God want to encourage you, you as uh, I did last week. Uh, we're privileged as a ministry to partner with Steve and Angie Burkhalter, Fortaleza, Brazil. If I want you as you're watching this to prayerfully consider partnering with them and you can contact our ministry office number, email, say, I want to partner, uh, want to partner with Steve and Angie. We'll get you in contact with them. For any archive broadcast, it's available on abnerswires.com. Lots of wonderful, I call them conversations with Abner because so many good God moments come out of it of the different friends that I've made. And uh, thank you for watching us. Thank you for joining us. I want to encourage you every Monday. Tuesday and Thursday, 804 Eastern, Daniel Company Prayer Call. All the information is available on our website. We got a bunch of upcoming events this fall. Faith Summit, uh, Arnold, Maryland, also Paso Robles, California, Holy Spirit Weekend, Las Vegas, Nevada. That's all available on our website. God bless you. Thank you for joining us. And thank you to our partners and friends who make these programs a reality. Bless you. Blessings.